So here's how we got started and the big problem we encountered. So the whole thing got started when I saw some amazing photos of the Glass Gym popcorn going around on Facebook last year. I hunted down the source for the seeds and that's Native Seed Search in Arizona and I got on the waiting list for one pack of seeds along with 7,000 other people. When their crop came in, we got a notice that we could get our seeds, and we did. I sowed them all, we had perfect germination, and then we shared half of them with our friend David King from the Seed Library of Los Angeles. We planted our 24 seedlings out in two earth boxes in our front yard farm. I thought because there was 110 days to harvest on the glass gym corn, this was my first time growing popcorn by the way, I would have time to do a round of bonjour, which is the regular bicolor fresh corn we grow every summer because it has 70 days to harvest. Uh, what we encountered next was a big collision of fertility and uh, set us off on quite the adventure in uh, isolation and hand pollination. It wasn't until much later in this journey that I realized what my mistake was, my uh, miscalculation in the dates, but we'll get to that a little bit later. We hope you enjoy the video. Isolation and hand pollination techniques. Hi, it's Joanne from Two Dog Organic Nursery. We're out in our front yard farm and we are doing isolation and uh, hand pollination on our two varieties of corn. We didn't intend for it to happen this way, but our Bonjour, which is the bicolor fresh corn, uh, has 70 days to harvest. And then we're right next to it in the earth boxes, we're growing the glass gem corn which has supposedly 110 days to harvest. Uh, and for some reason, they all decided to become fertile and set flowers and pollen at roughly the same time. So we don't want to mess up either variety. So we've been scrambling around every day. This is day five, putting the little shoot bags on the emerging shoots so the silks can form inside the bag and be protected from flying pollen. They're sort of a corn condom, if you will and then we've been bagging the tassels uh, into which we will shake out the pollen and collect the pollen and then we're going to hand apply it to the tassels and then cover them back up. We've, we've accomplished most of that already on the Bonjour which started maybe a full week ago now um, setting tassels. Hopefully we've got everything pretty well isolated. What we're going to do right now is we just uncovered on the glass gem corn these two, you can see them, these two shoots which are beginning to form their baby ears. And of course the silks are the female flower, the tassels are the male flower, and they're wind pollinated naturally, but here we don't want to get them all mixed up. So every one of these silks has to receive pollen, and it's pretty trippy because the pollen actually goes down the inside, it's like a little tube, the silk is all the way down into the ovary of the kernel and it pollinates it just like in a, in a, in a woman and <laughs> it's so fascinating to me and then the kernel will develop and if you don't get pollination on pollen on every single silk you end up with ears that have missing kernels so it's pretty fabulous how nature does it all by itself but of course we don't want to mix up our popcorn with our regular fresh corn so we're going to do this all by, by hand. Here are the tools we used. Brown paper bags for bagging up the tassels. Special waxed paper shoot bags for containing the silks. A sterilized bowl and sifter to collect your pollen and sift the anthers out of the pollen. A stable tall ladder waterproof markers, and lots of clips. An apron with pockets to hold your equipment, or a great assistant. Shh, I'm on the ladder at 5 a.m. before the farmer's market, bagging up the tassels. I have to be up on this ladder because this glass gym corn is so tall. So I'm using paper bags to cover the emerging Tassel, which is the male flower. And get it all inside there so we can collect the pollen. I hope this isn't too premature for covering it. That's one thing about gardening, you learn all the time.
collecting the pollen. This is probably the, one of the very first uh, tassels that we bagged. I was so concerned about crossing everything that I started to bag them very early. But you can see that it has indeed dropped some pollen. These little bead thingies are called anthers, and they open up and they drop pollen. And they'll do this for three or four days in a row. So after I take whatever pollen I can, I can put the bag back on and get more from it tomorrow. So I'm going to collect some pollen now from one of the early bags that we put on, I think, Saturday or Sunday morning. And you can kind of tell by the, how it sounds when you shake it, if it's just the, the, the tassel flapping about or if you can hear actual pollen and anthers, which are those little grain-looking things that hang down and actually release the pollen. So I'm going to do some of the ones that we put early. I think this is one of them here. Give it a good shake, and I'm going to gently take this off. Preparing and hand pollinating the silks. We're going to do the hand pollination now, and we could see through the little shoot bag the yellow, and that's the tassel. Uh, I'm not the tassel, the silks beginning to form. So we've taken off the shoot bag, and here we have this nice tuft of uh, silks, and I'm going to cut them into a little flat top, kind of like an artichoke flower. And that'll allow me to get the pollen right up in there. I'm just going to take it out with a clean brush that I've sterilized and just sort of paint it all in. We want to make sure we've got pollen on each and every silk. Sometimes I drop it through the sifter and get the little anthers out. They won't hurt anything if they're in there. My, my, uh, strainer was not sterilized so I didn't want to use it. So we've got lots and lots of pollen. We mix the pollen of different plants so we have a nice mixture of genetic information here so we get very colorful corn. Now we're going to rebag it <laughs> with a paper bag with the date that we pollinated and I'm going to put this on and clip it on and leave it on until the ear is completely formed. And the question is, and I certainly had this question too, how can the ears and the tassels and the silks and everything form if they're not out in sunlight? But the, there's so much foliage here that the plants are doing all the photosynthesis and they have the energy to do this even though they're bagged up, which is pretty fascinating. So we're going to cover it up. Oops, open. And you see how small the pollen is, and it really does fly by the wind. So that's why we're trying to go to all these measures to protect one variety from the other. Particularly since one is a popcorn and one is a fresh eating corn, we would have a big mess of nothing usable or edible if they cross. Okay, so we'll see that one in a few more weeks. We can peek, of course, along the way, but that'll just keep it protected from birds and bugs and such, uh, and other errant pollen in the neighborhood. After about three weeks, everything's bagged up, and now we wait. Here's a special note about contamination if you're going to be doing seed saving. Some of the shoot bags we marked with a C, and that stands for contaminated. And what happens in this case is that the silks emerge while we're working on the other variety. And of course, we've got pollen flying everywhere, so we can't take a chance that these silks did not get pollinated by the neighboring variety, which literally is six inches away from it. So we marked them and we bagged them. We will pollinate them with their own pollen um, and see what we get. But we did want to make sure we marked them as contaminated so we don't save seed from that particular ear. Here's the big reveal and the solution to our problem. Hi, it's me again, and it's September 4th, 2013, and we're coming to the end of our Glass Gym uh, hand pollination journey. We hand pollinated about 80 ears, and they were all bagged up out here in our front yard farm. And after about a month or six weeks, I just couldn't stand it any longer, so I came home, I took all the bags down, and I had to peek. So I looked at the very first one, it was so beautiful.
My husband wasn't home, so I quick texted him a photo and then I ran and got the neighbors because I was so excited. Um, we're going to now harvest all the ears. Everything is completely, completely dry. We quit watering the uh, earth boxes several weeks ago. And we're going to take down all the little ears and uh, let them dry a bit more. And then we're going to shell them with this nifty little popcorn sheller. And this, of course, means that next spring we're going to have certified organic um, glass gym seedlings for sale. So do plan on growing it in your spring garden. It's just such a thrill. And if you've got kids, oh my gosh, it's like opening little presents. Each one of them is so beautiful and so different. So I mentioned before that this was our first time growing popcorn. The problem we had was that I didn't really understand that in a popcorn, the 110 days to harvest includes all these many, many weeks where it stays on the stalk drying. You'd never have your fresh corn dry on the stalk, right? But I didn't understand that and I thought that in that 110 days, the fertility period was going to come much, much later. But it doesn't because all that later part is the drying part. So next year, if we do this very same two varieties, basically we just have to plant them about a month apart. That way, if we plant the bonjour first, it can have done its whole fertility before this one even gets going. Um, I do want to grow it again, and I highly suggest that you grow it. It's fantastic. It was a beautiful experience. We learned so much, and it was just a thrill all the way through. So that's it from the Two Dog Organic Nursery out in the front yard farm. Thanks a lot. Uh, happy gardening, and we'll see you at the markets. Bye-bye.